Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This is James, and in this video, I'll be doing a fan fiction account of the backstory of this guy you see here, this famous iconic walker from season one. I've done a video on this walker about who he is in the show and who the actor is and how they portrayed him in the show and just those kind of details in another video. I'll link to that down in the description below. But again, this is a fan fiction backstory of the purple suit walker guy from season one, episode one of The Walking Dead. See that guy? Yeah, the purple shirt? Dark suit? Yeah, that's me. My name's Joe. So I used to work right outside of the city. That's where I live with my mom. And I thought, one day I'm going to get out of here. One day I'm going to do better. I'm going to rise up. I work for a financial institution and... No, I don't play with the money or anything. I just do some coding work on their servers. But I got a chance to go to the main office downtown Atlanta. And I took it. I told mom, I'm moving up in the world. I'm going to get a place. I'm going to get a place in town, downtown. Until then, of course, I had to ride the bus. Working outside the city, being able to take a bike to work, I live pretty close. The bus ain't so bad, though. It's an everyday thing. Bus on the way, bus on the way back. And there's even another positive since I've started downtown. I've met someone, someone that works on the fifth floor just like I do. Her name's Peggy. I mean, we hadn't went out or anything, but we were talking kind of, I mean, I looked at her, she looked over at me. I think there's something there. And I, I mean, I was going, if I could just get a place of my own and get up the nerve to talk to her. There had definitely been some extra police on the streets once the stuff in the news started. About the third day, my mom was like, you shouldn't go into the city. But I was on a fast track to get my own place, to do better, to get out of there. I'm going to work. I rode the bus into work that day. And once I got up into the office, everyone was frantically talking. Not everybody had showed up, but the ones who did were pretty frantic. The military was rolling into town. I saw tanks, a lot of trucks and Humvees and soldiers. Helicopters and jets were flying over. Something drastically changed. It ended up being about 15 of us on the floor, and a couple of guys actually did go out and grab some supplies pretty early. We had plenty of water, enough food, not the greatest food, but enough food for several days and even though the military had said come down to the streets down trying to get people into more quarantined areas, we were just holding fast for a little bit just to see what's going on. And it was some type of premonition from God, I guess, because it was after that, after several days, they napalmed the city. We were able to watch from our fifth floor position at stuff going on on the street, and it was pretty crazy. The few that warned us that we should just hunker down and stay where we were at, man, they saved our lives, I think. Or at least for a while. We were lucky to survive the napalm being in the building we were in, and the next day after that, the military were gone. There were no people, just the dead. We started to realize there's no one coming to save us. Four people decided to leave. I wanted to go check on my mom, try to get back home myself, but I thought... I think somebody's coming to save us. I'm going to stay a little bit longer. With people leaving, that just means the food that we have, it's more for us. But then the next day, four guys come in. And you could just tell they're from the street. They're from the gutter. You could tell they were raised stealing and killing probably. Probably been in prison. They definitely knew how to fight. They went through us like we were nothing. They took everything we had, and they took Peggy. After I woke up from being knocked out from the robbery, I was beat up pretty bad. I, Most of the other people were dead. Some of them were actually reanimating right before me. I had to get out of there. The only other person I found was Tim, and he was a delivery guy. He didn't even work with us, but he stayed there with us on the fifth floor. We knew we had to get out of there. We were both banged up pretty bad. But we knew we had to get out of there. I really thought we would make it farther than we did, but we barely made it 
out of the building onto the sidewalk before we were attacked. There were two of them, and they just came out of nowhere. Maybe if we hadn't been banged up so bad, we could have gotten away. We could have ran, but Tim was bitten, and so was I. We did manage to get away from them, but we knew we weren't going to make it. We weren't going to make it at all, let alone very far. I think Tim was helping me more than I was helping him struggle along trying to walk. Up ahead was a bus, a burned out bus from the napalm. And I thought, let's just rest, Tim. Come on, let's get to the bus. It'll be safe. Maybe they can't get to us and we can rest for a minute. And that's kind of the last thing I remember before things got foggy before I died the first time. 